Burkina Faso has now entered into an arrangement uh, to go along with Mali in employing the Wagner forces there. I believe a mine in southern Burkina has been allocated to them as a form of payment for their services. Prime Minister of Burkina Faso in the last 10 days has been in Moscow. And to have them operating on our northern border is particularly distressing for us in Ghana. You're probably familiar with the saying, snitches get stitches. But it's important to note that this doesn't hold true for African presidents. In the case of African leaders who provide information about their counterparts, they often receive favors and financial support from the United States. However, the concerning aspect here is that they're essentially and allegedly betraying their fellow African leaders for loans they'll have to repay and for the favor of individuals who don't genuinely value their well-being. In reality, these outsiders regard them with skepticism and view them as gullible for disclosing sensitive information. We can exemplify this by discussing the president of Ghana. There was an occasion when he met Antony Blinken and essentially disclosed confidential details about other African leaders to gain favor, seemingly oblivious to the fact that these foreign powers are primarily interested in African resources like oil, coal, and cocoa, rather than the welfare of the African people. While African leaders strive to secure the welfare of their people, some of them are compromising their fellow African nations for a few American perks and dollars. We're focusing on the president of Ghana and his behavior, which seems to swing between extremes. We want to clarify that this isn't a judgment of him, but rather an observation based on a specific video. You see, there's something known as the Stockholm Syndrome in Africa, where people tend to perceive their oppressors as their saviors because they provide jobs and economic opportunities, even though they're exploiting our natural resources. It's as if many Africans don't fully recognize their worth beyond what the colonial powers have told them. The real concern here is that African countries often prioritize their relationships with nations like the United States, even though these countries have a complex history on the continent. To illustrate this, the president of Ghana is cited as an example. He allegedly shared sensitive information about other African nations during that meeting, even though the U.S. has a history of interference in Ghana and Africa as a whole. What's even more troubling is that the president spoke negatively about Francophone countries trying to free themselves from French rule. This kind of behavior weakens African unity and sovereignty and plays right into the hands of colonial powers. It's essential for Africans to come together and support each other during times of need, rather than betray one another for short-term political gain. This is akin to the repetition of colonialism, where African leaders willingly give away valuable information that could assist their fellow Africans in their struggles for emancipation. The accusations revolve around alleged compromises on key African interests in exchange for benefits from the United States. Some say that the president has been too accommodating to American interests, leading to compromises on economic policies, trade deals, and even security matters. But, as with any controversy, it's crucial to hear both sides of the story. There's a growing chorus of voices claiming that the president's approach has leaned too heavily in favor of American interests. These claims suggest that such accommodations have led to notable compromises in various areas, including economic policies, trade agreements, and even security matters. The critics argue that these compromises may not always serve the best interests of the nation and its citizens. In recent years, Ghana has become a symbol of progress. From its bustling cities to its thriving industries, it's a nation on the rise. With advancements in technology, entrepreneurship, and a growing middle class, Ghana is carving out its own path toward prosperity. It's in this context that we must consider the impact of external relationships and partnerships. The decisions made by leaders in their interactions with global powers can have far-reaching consequences. These decisions can influence economic growth, regional stability, and even the well-being of the people they serve. Leaders from across Africa often converge on the global stage, whether at the United Nations, the African Union, or various international summits. These gatherings provide a platform to discuss and negotiate partnerships that can shape the continent's destiny. And this is why the actions of Ghana's president are under the spotlight. It's not just about Ghana. It's about how these decisions impact the greater African community. 
The choices made by leaders can either promote unity and progress or potentially perpetuate division and dependency. In recent years, we've seen various African countries come together to work on regional projects, trade agreements, and initiatives aimed at fostering cooperation and development. These endeavors signify a growing sense of pan-African unity and shared goals. The question we must ask is how the decisions of Ghana's president and leaders in similar positions align with this broader vision of African unity and progress. Are they making strategic choices that uplift the entire continent, or do these choices inadvertently serve external interests at the expense of regional cohesion? African leaders often speak passionately about the continent's potential and the importance of collective progress. It's a vision that has the potential to transform the lives of millions of people. Our examination of Ghana's president's decisions goes beyond mere critique. It's about ensuring that leaders make choices that reflect the best interests of their nations, the continent, and its people. Stay informed, stay engaged. If you found this video thought-provoking and informative, please remember to hit that subscribe button below and join our community. Thank you for being part of this journey, and we'll catch you in the next video.